The NBA is finally coming back, and I thought that I would weigh in on the impending decision on the NBA MVP, which of course is a regular season award, but you can see that the members of the media haven't quite decided who they should pick, and you're seeing a lot of back and forth. It's pretty much either going to be Giannis or LeBron, and you can see a lot of the media is on LeBron's payroll, it sounds like, you know. I mean, maybe they actually have that opinion, but they're not being objective. There's a lot of facts that they're leaving out. The number one fact is that LeBron is playing with a guy in Anthony Davis who will probably finish in top five. He will definitely finish in top five in MVP voting just as well. And that's the second best player. Actually, probably, I think AD is actually the best player on the team. Anthony Davis leads the Lakers in three out of the five major statistical categories. He's leading in scoring, rebounds, and blocks. LeBron is leading only in, actually, I think AD is also leading in steals, and LeBron is only leading the Lakers in assists. So in four out of the five statistical categories, major stats, Anthony Davis is actually better than LeBron. And I think most people would say that if the Lakers are going to go far in the playoffs, AD is going to have to be the best player. He's the only player out of the two that has the potential to be the best offensive and defensive player. Anthony Davis could be defensive player of the year. He's actually second in defensive win shares, fourth in defensive rating, third in total win shares, and second in win shares per 48 minutes behind Giannis. Giannis is number one in defensive win shares, box plus minus, defensive rating, defensive win shares, and defensive box plus minus. And I'm being a nerd like the Colin Cowherds of the world, looking up all these stats. I got them pulled up here. Let's start with the stats first of all, then I'll make my argument for why I think objectively Giannis should really be closer to being the unanimous MVP. I mean, LeBron, you can put him in second for the season because of some of the things he's doing, but there's nothing that LeBron is doing that is historic. Giannis is doing things individually, both individually and at the team level, that are historic. So let's start with Giannis. He's averaging 29.6 points per game on 60% true shooting, 13.7 rebounds per game, 5.8 assists, one steal and one block per game. LeBron is averaging 25.7 points per game, 7.9 rebounds per game, 10.6 assists, 1.2 steals, and 0.5 blocks. AD is averaging 26.7 points, 9.4 rebounds, 3.1 assists, 1.5 steals, and 2.4 blocks. Giannis has a second highest player impact estimate at 23.9, which is second in the league, and that is a stat that is pretty much similar to PER, which is the player efficiency rating. It is based on individual game performances. And LeBron is fourth in the league at 20. Anthony Davis is 11th in the league at 18.3, although you'll see that between 5 and 10, a lot of guys are close. Chris Middleton is at 24th on this index at 15.5. So compare the guy that LeBron is playing with, who in some of these stats, he's either first or second in the league, and then the second best player on the Bucks, Chris Middleton, his first year as an all-star, whereas Giannis is also having very close to the highest PER for a single season in NBA history. He's leading the league at 31.6 for PER, which is only .2 away from Wilt's all-time 31.8 for a season, and he also has the second at 31.7. So if the season were to end right now, Giannis would have the third highest PER in history. I think Giannis would be right there with Michael Jordan. Anthony Davis is third in the league in PER with 28.2, and Anthony Davis also has the second highest career average PER of all time, right below Michael Jordan and above guys like LeBron and Will Chamberlain. Uh, LeBron is ninth this season for PER at 26, while he's also 18th in minutes, whereas Giannis is 72nd in minutes played. Giannis is first in field goals made. LeBron's fourth. Okay, I just want you to see the kind of comparison 
Okay, and obviously the major stat that people are saying, the Bucks are 53 and 12, the Lakers are 49 and 14, both first in their respective conferences. But the Bucks have the highest point differential and defensive rating in the league, and we know that they were blowing out teams by double digits. They had a long streak, I think, of like 20 to 30 games with double digit victories over their opponents. So, if in either scenario, the season wasn't cut short. We'd be expecting more historic things from Giannis, who's pretty much improved in every major category you can think of since his last year reign as MVP. The main narrative that I've seen pontificated by members of the media is that LeBron is doing all of this in year 17. And they're using this anecdote to ascribe the success of the team to LeBron. Now, while this is true, if you want to bring continuity into the argument of a single-season performance evaluation, I think it's completely redundant, but we can do that. If you want to talk about continuity, then in year 16 of LeBron's career, last year, he was average at best, and the Lakers missed the playoffs completely. Fast forward to the summer of last season and the offseason, and LeBron, who is basically the GM of the team, traded away some of the best pieces, two of the starters, and Josh Hart. He traded away those guys, cashed them in, so to speak, for Anthony Davis. And now the media wants to pretend that Anthony Davis doesn't exist, that he's not <laughs> a reason for the turnaround. And so the you can really see the bias in the me members of the media. This is not for them a meritocratic award. This is a popularity contest for them. But Giannis deserves the award. Giannis is clearly the best player in the league, the most dominant player during this regular season. He has the highest impact on the game, value above replacement in the game, the highest PER. Uh, for all the stats-obsessed people, Giannis has better stats than LeBron. Whether you want to go by the advanced analytics or you want to watch the games, Giannis is doing things that are historic. LeBron is having a good season, but let's not forget he's playing with Anthony Davis, who again, I think Anthony Davis, who has said he thinks he's the best player in the world, this is one of the reasons I didn't like him going to the Lakers, because if he wanted to prove that, you had your own team to prove that on. You should have gone to go and play with LeBron. Nonetheless, Anthony Davis is the key for the Lakers' success in the postseason. LeBron isn't going to be able to do, particularly on the defensive end, he's nothing like an Anthony Davis. So to ignore Anthony Davis's impact, which has really turned the entire team around, it's ridiculous. If LeBron had been doing all of these things at 35 years old without another all-star, well, then we'd be having a completely different conversation. See, this is the conversation that they're trying to have. This is the narrative they're trying to spin. And they're very slick, the media is. These members of the media, they are very slick. They're trying to make it seem as though LeBron is doing the same as Giannis, but they're ignoring the fact that Anthony Davis exists on his team, okay? Giannis is playing with a fringe all-star in Chris Middleton. This is his first year, probably the best he's been playing, and I don't think Chris Middleton makes that team if he's not playing with Giannis and being coached by Budenholzer. Budenholzer just makes everyone that much better, it's clear. But LeBron is playing with a superstar and Anthony Davis, who, as I've said, has the second highest PER of all time. We're talking about one of the most talented players, uh, clearly a top five player in the world, and a top five MVP candidate. You cannot tell me that LeBron is the same value of Giannis. If you take LeBron off that team and you take Giannis off the Bucks, you know, both teams are going to be worse, but the Bucks will not be what they are. They will not be a juggernaut. Giannis makes that team a historically great team. LeBron makes that team, I think they would be a playoff team probably without LeBron. Anthony Davis was making the playoffs without LeBron in the West. LeBron has not done that without Anthony Davis out in the West. You can say what you want, just facts. And the last piece of bias is that no one was seriously considering Steph Curry or Kevin Durant to be MVPs when they were playing together. But in all those years in Miami, LeBron won two MVPs, and every year they were considering him as one of the top two candidates for MVP, even though he was playing with a big three and with a sidekick and, and with a co-star and D-Wade, prime D-Wade. So I don't understand 
why the bias continues when the media were trying to say that Anthony Davis was some people were already crowning Anthony Davis as the best teammate LeBron's ever had and also going as far as to say that this might be the best duo the Lakers have ever had I mean it's ridiculous they haven't won anything they haven't proven anything together in the postseason and you can't have it both ways if Anthony Davis is that great of an addition playing next to LeBron then how come you refuse to give him the credit that he deserves. He's more than just a participant in the success of the Lakers. He's arguably the best player on the Lakers and the most important. Without Anthony Davis, they don't stand any chance. You might say same thing if they take LeBron off, but it's up to Anthony Davis to be the transcendent talent in the playoffs. If he comes up short, the Lakers have no chance against the Clippers, maybe not even the Rockets. It's Anthony Davis that people in the barbershop are saying, wow, I don't know if anyone can stop that guy. No one's fearing LeBron, especially not defensively. He's a great facilitator. He's the best point guard in the league, arguably this season, but he's not the best player. That should be Giannis. I would put Anthony Davis right there with LeBron and talks to be the second best player in the league, or excuse me, to be the second best favorite for MVP, but I think that Giannis is far and away the best. He's almost the unanimous MVP. I don't see how there's any argument for LeBron. You can say he's had a wonderful season, but there's no argument for him being better than Giannis this season. And just one last way to put this, okay, stop looking at Anthony Davis as some sort of an independent variable of the Lakers' success, okay? The Lakers' success is totally dependent on this guy being on the roster. If he's not on the roster, they're not number one in the West, they're not a contender to be the best in the league. Same with Giannis. Giannis, you take him away from the Bucks. The Bucks are nothing close to be the best in the East or the league. Giannis is the MVP.